Hello there. My name's Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor at Georgia Tech, and I'm experimenting this evening with a new Wacom tablet that I'm trying out. I'm using the laptop microphone that's just built into my MacBook Pro. If this works out well, I'll probably try this again or something like this with a better microphone. So what should we talk about tonight? Let's talk about voltage-controlled amplifiers. These are probably the simplest component that you might put in a modular synthesizer. And truth in advertising, I'm really going to be talking about current-controlled amplifiers. In another video, we could look at how you might build a voltage-current converter to drive this current-controlled amplifier I'm going to describe to actually create a real voltage-controlled amplifier. This is mostly an excuse to introduce a circuit element called the operational transconductance amplifier. This doesn't show up as a standard component of most undergraduate electrical engineering curriculums. Occasionally, operational transconductance amplifiers, these OTAs, will show up in something like a senior level analog VLSA design class. You will be sorely tempted when you start starting to work with them to treat them as if they were op amps. They are not op amps. You'll want to treat them like they're op amps because they are often drawn using a triangle just as regular op amps are, but they act very, very differently. So the operational transconductance amplifier that we're going to look at today has three input pins instead of just two like an ordinary op amp. It does have two voltage inputs, the way you are used to with an op amp. So we'll call this V plus, we'll call this V minus. But there's also a third input that's a control voltage flowing into the OTA. The output of the OTA is not a voltage like in the case of an op amp. It's actually a current coming out of the output pin. So instead of having a voltage output like an op amp, it has a current output. The other difference is the gain of the OTA is actually controlled by this third input pin. So the gain of an OTA, the transconductance gain, is given by a magical fact constant of 19.2 times the control voltage. In another video, we can look at where that 19.2 comes from. The actual output current is equal to this transconductance gain times the difference of the input voltages. So an op amp is generally set to have tons and tons and tons and tons of gain. And the idea of that is that it has this insanely high gain and you use an op amp in a negative feedback configuration in order to get the gain down to something manageable. In the case of the OTA, you're actually explicitly setting the gain using this current control input. So OTAs are most often in a situation like the current controlled amplifier we're about to describe, used in a feed forward mode. So they're not used with feedback. So you want to be very careful to try to not treat an OTA circuit with golden op amp rules. For instance, for an op amp in a negative feedback configuration under certain approximations and a certain, assuming certain limits are stayed within, uh, the, out, in, the output voltage and current of the op amp will try to be whatever it needs to be in order to keep these input terminal voltages the same. That's not the case with an OTA. You want to really try to avoid trying to apply those, that kind of golden op amp thinking to an OTA circuit. So we now have the basic component of a voltage controlled amplifier, or I should say here, current controlled amplifier. Let's take the negative terminal of the OTA, ground it. Let's take the positive terminal, place the input voltage that we want to control. And the control current here will set our gain. But we would really like the output here to be a voltage, not a current. So let's think about the kind of circuit elements we have. Well, a resistor is a convenient device for turning a voltage into a current or a current into a voltage, assuming it's driven by a relatively solid voltage source or current source. Here we have a current source. Let's drop it through 
a conversion resistor. Maybe I'll call this RC for conversion. And then the output voltage here is now given by the gain of the OTA times what the input voltage over here is. That's just our V plus. V minus is zero in this case. And now by Ohm's law, this is a current. If we multiply that by our conversion resistor, that gives us the voltage out. And so this GM times this RC gives us our gain. Now in practice, this will usually be driving some other circuitry. You don't want the input impedance of that circuitry to be loading down the circuit. You don't want any of this current flowing out of here to be going elsewhere, anywhere else than down this resistor. So we'll typically place some sort of buffer here. For instance, we might take a regular op amp, put a positive terminal there, put its positive terminal there, put in, it in a negative feedback loop, and then that will sort of protect this part of our circuit from the remaining circuitry here. Another approach, though, might be to say, look at that op amp and think to ourselves, hey, let's use the op amp itself as our converter. So let's write down the same kind of structure. I have my voltage going in. We'll ground the negative terminal on the OTA. Here's my control current going in as usual. And now, We'll take the current floating out of here and put it in the feedback loop of the op amp. So this is going to the negative terminal over here. Now we have our final output. And then we'll ground the positive terminal. So this op amp's now acting as a current to voltage converter. Remember, these ideally have uh, effectively infinite input impedance, so no currents no significant currents floating through here. It's all flowing through the current. But if you think about it, if the current's flowing this direction, this means that relative to the ground here, this voltage here needs to be negative. So this is a current controlled amplifier, but it's an inverting structure. So we can write down our same kind of gain equation here. We just need to put a minus sign there. If you don't like that, if you wanted to have a similar sort of op amp configuration, but have it be non-inverting, well, that's easy enough. Let's just take our original OTA and swap the role of the positive and negative terminals. So if I ground the positive terminal now and put the input into the negative terminal, then I can write the exact same gain equation as I have over here. Now, there's a few caveats to this structure. One is that the real OTA only acts in that linear kind of fashion if the differences between these input voltages is relatively small. So, in particular, you generally want to keep this voltage difference to be somewhere around less than 10 millivolts. If you go beyond that, you start getting into nonlinearities that are described by a hyperbolic tangent of all the exciting things. That's something we'll actually explicitly take advantage of, uh, potentially in some other videos. But for right now, we suppose we want to keep this in uh, operating in this as this kind of in this linear mode. So if we're putting in, say, maybe your input voltage, you want to maybe have something like a 10 volt range instead of a 10 millivolt range. This might be something you'd use in a modular synthesizer. You're going to have to cut that voltage down coming in. So let's explore that in this particular scenario, uh, situation over here. Let me clear out some space over here. Uh, let me not erase the entire slide. That was not the objective. Oh, here we go. I want to grab the section here. Let's now delete that. Okay, that works. Uh, if we're doing the super professionally, we would go back and uh, edit this part out or do something else fancier here. So essentially all we need to do here is take this voltage input, but run it through a divide down ladder before we 
actually hit the input here. So let's call this maybe R1, I'll call this R2, put some voltage here. If R1 and R2, if the series combination of those is reasonably high, then this will still present a high input impedance. Ideally, an OTA on its own presents effectively an infinite input impedance. In real life, that is, of course, something finite, and you might have to worry about that. It will quite often approximate it as such. So effectively, no significant current is flowing in here. And that way, it's the same kind of approximation we usually use for an op amp. So we'll say, OK, well, then the voltage here at this V plus is now determined by this V input through this voltage division letter. So I don't want to call that letter, whatever you want to call it. So the V plus here, that's whatever this input voltage is. And our standard voltage divider rules will have R2 in the numerator and R1 plus R2 in the denominator. Now, in practice, we quite often will need to be dividing this down a lot. So quite often, we'll say that our R2 is much, much smaller than R1. So we can approximate R1 plus R2 as being approximately R1. So we'll say that this is approximately VI R2 over R1. So for instance, say you wanted to do that division from 10 volts down to 10 millivolts. We might pick something like, say, R1 is equal to 100 kilo ohms, and maybe R2 is equal to 100 ohms. So that will give me a pretty significant division. I can still use the same basic gain formula. I just now have to include, now let's make that RC here. I now have to include that divide down sequence, this R2 over R1 in my formula. But I still have the same basic setup. So in a future lecture or a future video, we can look at more details about what an OTA actually is, how it's constructed, what are some common OTAs you might be able to buy from your favorite electronic supplier. And we can also look at the kind of circuits we might want to use as a voltage to current converter to turn this current here uh, or to create the current here that we're going to use to drive our in total voltage controlled amplifier. So hopefully that wasn't too horrible for something that I've improvised at 3.50 in the morning on Wednesday evening, and hope you enjoy that. See you later.